Hi, I'm Caitlin Graves, and I'm doing my Lest We Forget project over John Brown, who was a radical abolitionist in the 1800s. I used the biography Midnight Rising by Tony Harewitz. John Brown was born on May 9, 1800, in Torrington, Connecticut. I used this picture as a substitute for John Brown as a baby. He was the fourth of eight children. Owen Brown and Ruth Mills were his parents, and he was the grandson of John Brown. His father participated in abolitionist acts in Hudson, Ohio, their hometown. His father housed Underground Railroad fugitives. His teacher, Eliza Wright, was also an abolitionist. His father had an assistant at the tannery, which was his work, named Jesse Grant, who was the father of Ulysses S. Grant. John Brown wanted to be a minister, but ended up in his hometown running his father's tannery before opening his own. John Brown married Diane Flusk in 1820. However, she died in 1832, but they had four living children together. They, they moved to Richmond, Pennsylvania, where he helped an estimated 2,500 slaves escape. He ran a tannery and also raised cattle and surveyed. He established a post office and a school. Later on, he went on to marry Mary Ann Day in 1833, and they had 13 children together. In 1836, he moved his family to Franklin Mills, Ohio, where he had a great financial loss in the economic crisis of 1839. In 1846, Brown and his business partner, Simon Perkins, moved to Springfield, Massachusetts, where he found a community invested in the anti-slavery movement. In 1846 to 1850, he belonged to the Sanford Free Church, where he had speeches from Frederick Douglass and Sojourner Truth. Though a white gentleman, Douglass wrote in his abolitionist weekly, The North Star, soon after his Springfield visit, Brown is in sympathy a black man and is deeply inter interested in our cause as though his own soul has been pierced with the iron of slavery, Douglass wrote. Brown left Springfield in 1850, but before he left, he, found, he founded a militant group to prevent slave, slaves' capture and called the, the, the League of Gileadites. Springfield was a transformative time for Brown. In 1855, he moved to Kansas, where he and other slaves thought they could bring Kansas into the Union as a free state. In 1856, pro-slavery activists emerged in Kansas. On May 24th to May 25th, 1856, there was the Potawatomi Massacre, which killed five professional slave hunters. The massacre was the event that started the bloodiest period in bleeding Kansas history. Two of his sons were captured and his home was destroyed. The morning of 1856, Brown's sons, Frederick, was shot and killed. There were several other little skirmishes over the summer of 1856. A group of six wealthy abolitionists offered financial support to Brown and his activities. They were called the Secret Six. One of the Secret Six members said, under his natural and unaffected simplicity and modesty, there is an irreversible prosperity to war upon injustice and wrong. Another said, the slave will be delivered by the shedding of blood and the signs are multiplying that his deliverance is at hand. On May 10th of 1858, Brown held a constitutional convention in Chatham, Ontario, where he was introduced to Harriet Tubman. He introduced his plans to make Kansas the end of the Underground Railroad. In 1859, they wrote the Declaration of Liberty. Most of the delegates signed the Constitution, but very little chose to join Brown. He felt that if he started the first battle, the slaves would rise up and carry out the rebellion through the South. In August of 1859, Brown revealed his Harper Ferry plan to Douglas, who discouraged him. On October 16, 1859, he had 21 men attack Harper's Ferry Armory. In the raid, he cut the telegraph wires and captured the armory. However, he let a train stop and then continued through the next town. Or he sent a telegraph. The railroad sent a telegraph to the B&O, 
who then sent it to President Buchanan. Local townspeople held off the raiders until the U.S. Marines were able to get there and put an end to the siege, where Brown was captured. Brown's trial began on October 27th. On November 2nd, he was found guilty and sentenced to a public hanging. He died on December 2nd, 1889, in Charlestown, Virginia, where he was buried in North Elba, New York. Wendell Phillips wrote, History will date Virginia's emancipation from Harper's Ferry. True, the slave is still there, so when the tempest uproots a pine on your hills, it looks green for months a year or two. Still, it is timber, not a tree. John Brown has loosened the roots of the slave system. It, it only breathes. It does not live hereafter. John Brown was ahead of his time as an abolitionist. He would be relevant in the 21st century because he was passionate about fighting for equal rights for everyone. The Harper's Ferry raid and today's protest are similar because Brown did, didn't see peace without first having violence. I used a picture of John Brown and today's protesters to show the fight for equality. All men are created equal. Wasn't a manifest truth, it was a self-evident lie.